Well, after the dramatic fire that destroyed our Leopard 50 catamaran, it's time to start boat shopping all over again at the Annapolis Boat Show. This week, we preview the HH50, an award-winning high-performance rocket ship with a quality build and exquisite finish. Come barefoot with us and see this top-shelf luxury catamaran. Hi okay. folks. Okay, hi guys. Uh, we are here at Cape Canaveral, the uh, site of the Kennedy Space Center, and we're reviewing the HH-50, which is good because it's very much like a rocket ship. Yes, it's very innovative and it's very apt to be here. And it's the most recently designed catamaran on the market, we are told. So let's have a look at it. Enjoy. The initial genesis of the company was to do high-speed catamarans that fly hulls, okay? So the, the, in the beginning, they were over 60 feet. There's only a very limited market of people that want to do that kind of crazy stuff. Working with our team, the guys here at Morelli Melvin, who are our designers, we had the 55 first, which was a little big for a couple. People that are just now getting into the cruising lifestyle, but that want a performance cat. People that don't want to go six knots. They want to be able to outrun the weather. They want to be able to make shorter passage times, and they want the strength and reliability of, of, and lightness of the carbon fiber. So most of the people that buy our 50-foot cat are all couples. So this boat's got dagger boards, and it's got a carbon rig. We have dagger boards, and we can fly a hull, even with our 50, okay? But 99% of our clients, they don't, they're, not want, they're not really interested in flying a hull. When you fly a hull with them, they're like, put it down. <laughs> they want to know that their boat has the capability to do that kind of thing. Okay, and it's strong enough to do that thing. And it also has the design influence from these guys, the design so that um, they're getting the, the very latest, I would say, it's two years old design, the very latest design cat on the planet as their, as their homes. This is how we came up with the 50. We wanted to have a, a boat that a couple could operate easily, uh, still room. Having a group of people, having your family, especially it's all open like this, and being able to even sail with you know big gigantic door because of the structure and the way the guys designed it, it's strong enough to have this huge opening which makes the whole thing feel so light, bright and airy. And then also to be able to have these huge windows aft, you have to have the structure as well. So when you're in, a, when you come in and you go down in our staterooms, you'll notice that they feel you're not down in a pit, and it feels really open and nice. Our galley was designed such that it, it, it's a very user-friendly galley. We have enough storage, we have enough freezer room, enough fridge room. We can add an ice maker. We're constantly adding the different things by listening to our clients. And uh, we're not afraid to, to make changes along the way, which is pretty fun. When you're at the helm, if you're on a passage, you, you know, it's, you're hanging out for several hours when you're on watch. And you can turn and relax and lean your back against the backrest and kick your feet up. We've got twin helms. Um, everything's basically redundant on both sides. This client, they've got three kilowatts of solar. Uh, they're using beta engines and they've got 185 amp uh, alternators on them. And they also have a six and a half kilowatt um, Northern Lights generator. Well, speaking, they've been on the boat now for 14 months. I think he's got like four hours on his generator. And they only have three house batteries, so it's 600 amp hours or 11 kilowatts. 11 total. kilowatts, yeah. Wow. So they, um, they're super happy with just using the, the engine, uh, using the engine. He told me, Todd, the owner, said, if he, in retrospect, he wouldn't even get the, the generator. The latest round of people buying our boats are going, they're electric boats, meaning now we're using it in the induction stoves and we're using the convection microwave. Yeah, no gas anymore. No gas. Mm -hmm. And even uh, electric uh, barbecue. barbecue grill. Mm -hmm. And we've got enough power to be able to do it. You'll see that we use aramid fiber, so it's, those are actually the, the cap shrouds are Kevlar and they're just covered. That's just the cover over the top because right. it doesn't like UV. So let's have a look at this spectacular 50 foot catamaran. The steering stations are well positioned with good visibility out of all sides. And obviously this catamaran has dual steering stations, which gives you really good visibility of the hulls when mooring and also of the sails when sailing upwind. All lines lead to the cockpit so handling is very easy. 
and this boat has been specifically designed to be sailed and managed by a couple all by themselves. The helm stations also have good sun protection and also good weather protection with all round drop downs. So I'm just walking forward on this HH50 and nice wide open decks, Kevlar shrouds covered with rubber to keep the UV off them. But they feel like steel, they're really incredibly tight rigging. This is a curved carbon impregnated Daggerboard. Here you see a permanently fitted electric winch which drives the daggerboard up and down with controls at the steering station. The curved daggerboards make it much more effective when sailing upwind as it creates lift as you're sailing along. We put in uh, a water maker underneath here so these steps right. are moved All right. and the scuba compressor we go here. Now this is a little different. It's a carbon Longeron and in Martingale, but you see these downhauls? These are downhauls. So it runs to these cars here, and they use your winch. Oh. So they lock it to the top and pull them down. Oh, right, okay. So you don't have all the stress from up and down uh -huh. the back. They're just locked there. They have a release, and you can take this one and this one and lay it on the tramp and just have your saw enough. Oh, right, okay. Or leave them all up and pull out the ones you want. So a similar locker in the starboard hull also has lots of storage and the tramps are large and spacious. As you can see from this bowsprit, this boat is permanently rigged with the option of four separate foresails and also an option of a stay sail. Also three are on furlers, so all of that adds to the value and cost of the boat. That's what I said to you about the leopard initially, you know, like we you need these that, little, you these want those things. on the bow. Yeah. When you come to the self-tacking jib, this is another fantastic feature which helps short-handed sailing. And we are told that this does work exceptionally well with easy tacking of the boat without any handling of lines required at all. The generator anchor and anchor chain is all in these lockers underneath the mast, keeping the weight nicely centralized in the boat. So here we have a carbon mast and with the number of permanently rigged foresails this boat has an awful lot of lines running to service all those sails but this all looks to be of very high quality and very well laid out. Now the question one should ask is how did they get this main to pack so low down on the boom despite this being a really large high mast and the key is in the track. If you are in the middle of the boat, hopefully you can see that. But there's basically a double track where you have the cars slipping down alternately as they come down through the mast as a separator and some go to the left and some go to the right as they come down. So the sail packs in half the height that they do in normal other boats. Looks like they've got ridges along the saloon roof too to collect, collect water. And here you can see the connection where you attach your pipes to drain it into the tanks. Bridge deck clearance is a really important factor for performance and to reduce slamming in comfort when going upwind and this boat has very clean underwing and very high bridge deck so all looking superb. So then as we go and have a look at the living areas of the boat, we first of all have a look in the cockpit. And because the cockpit and the saloon merge together, the space looks absolutely enormous. This is really nicely laid out, unbelievable appearance of space for a 50 foot catamaran. They do have an unusual setup with almost bunk seats and two tables running in line with each other, with one being inside and one being outside. My first feeling of this was intrigue, wondering how this would work. But as I watched people using the area, it actually works exceptionally well. The saloon is also absolutely beautiful with lovely cabinetry and the galley works very well too with the nav station up on the port side and forward facing so the navigator has good views ahead. The 
owner suite is on the port side with plenty of storage and especially noticeable is the separate shower with a very large space and a separate head. Again, phenomenal craftsmanship and this is very evident in everything you touch and feel and open. You can also see the headroom is excellent with Elizabeth having difficulty even touching the ceiling. Large windows in the aft cabin let enormous amounts of light and also wide perspex windows full length of the cabin make this cabin really bright and airy. And in the starboard hull we have two guest cabins with their own heads or toilets but a shared shower. You can see in the stern cabin again the huge aft window which lets in a large amount of light and the same wide perspex windows along the hull. Same thing on the starboard side when you go over there you will notice we do a uh, Jack and Jill style, we call it Jack and Jill style shower, where you share the shower but everybody's got their own toilet. You still have the, the huge windows and you still have all the storage. This is a sandwich construction. So carbon fiber is, it's, it's heavier than fiberglass. People think it's lighter, it's not, it's heavier but you use less, less of it. So you have a very thin skin and you don't want to have it resin rich. You mm -hmm. just have just what you need. So you use vac a vacuum process um, that sucks all the resin out of it and it forms over a, a closed cell core like this that makes a very st stiff structure. Mm -hmm. If you were to do it in fiberglass, it's a very similar process to get the, to get the foam together, but you use more of it. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit heavier. So the difference is about 1,700 kilograms in this boat. Mm. So you can get a fiberglass version of this boat with performance keels. It's a little bit heavier, but it's interesting. The fiberglass boat uh, displaces less than it weighs because it has a hollow keel. And when you have a hollow keel, it actually affects the weight of the boat uh, by acting like a balloon underneath of it. Okay. So the, our, our performance keels on this the fiberglass version of this boat is um, uh, almost the same performance as a daggerboard boat in a lot of respects. Wow. So if you want to save some money, you can get the fiberglass boat nice. and have a carbon mast if you wish and so okay. forth. So when I first saw the first figures for the boat when it first came out, he was doing uh, like six knots of six knots uh, boat speed in seven knots of air. Wow. And a very flat yeah. Mediterranean day. And then wow. I knew from my own that the boat was going to be special. What you'll find over your pre the previous boat that you had for a very short period of time uh, is that you'll be faster, you'll point higher. Yeah. Uh, and since this is all carbon infrastructure inside of the fiberglass boat yeah. and the carbon boat, uh -huh. they have a share a lot of carbon. Yeah. There's no creaking. There's no yeah. movement. Yeah. Yeah. So your holes aren't going to do this. Yeah. And the floor won't creak when you walk on it. And when you're sailing, you don't hear creaks. You'll hear the winches. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you yeah. won't hear the other yeah. things. Uh, what, what, what's the draft of the? of the boat, the 50 foot boat with the dagger boards versus the keel. This is 5 foot 6 on a dagger board and the keels yeah. are less. I think they're around 5. I had to double check. <coughs> we can do shallow draft rudders and we can do a, um, a gantry to bring the, the dagger boards all the way up. And with your keels, you can can you sit on the sand if you want to? In the, 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 the keel has winglets which are designed to take the weight of the boat. Um, but I haven't got the I haven't got from the factory that you can do it, but I was told that the boat, the keels would take away the boat. Right, okay. So it'll be the runner of the keels. What do you have in the way of um, airtight voids? Do you want to see them? There's a crash bulkhead. See there's a bulkhead in there? Yep. So that's the crash bulkhead. And then after that, we have um, a subfloor. And if you get the water jets rather than the bow thruster, we can seal the floor and have that be a water yeah. watertight bulkhead. And then right here, um, we have a watertight bulkhead. Okay. That's not structural, but it's watertight. So yep. if you want to put a waterproof door in it to get into a sub cabin, if we want to make a crew cabin, we can yeah. do that. If you flood both hulls, uh, I can show you in the manual where it floats, but this boat floats flooded. Okay, good. They're, uh, they're carbon fiber ring frames. Yeah. And then the, bu the bulkheads are also carbon fiber. Yeah. Uh, so the ring frames are, I believe those are solid carbon fiber, and there might be some cord bulkheads on board as well. They're glassed in there. Oh yeah, they're epoxied yeah. in. Fudge subfloor, all glassed in, and then, yeah. then polyurethane painted. 
Yeah, yeah. And then ring frames. Here's a ring frame. Here's a ring frame. Right. These are um, the shower modules. Chris. Carbon fiber. Chris, right. So they're all blast in. So they all become part of the string. And it's 2.1 for a carbon fiber boat like right. this. And if 55 is around 3.1 in carbon, and it's 2.5 in fiberglass. Okay, so let's go over those prices again. The HH50 in full carbon is $2.1 million. And if you get the fiberglass version, the OC50 is $1.6 million. The 55 in carbon is $3.1 million. And the fiberglass version of that 55 footer, the OC55, is 2.5 million dollars okay guys so having just got the price of the hh50 that <laughs> is clear that this catamaran is designed for a, s a small niche of people firstly you have to be able to afford it and then of course you have to be wanting to get a boat that has this level of performance and this level of luxury and are willing to pay this sort of price. The HH50 is all carbons. The OC50, which is exactly the same hull shape, is in fiberglass, 1700 kilograms heavier and has fixed mini keels. They're being very cautious about whether you can sit on them. They're designed to take the weight of the boat, but I don't think the manufacturer recommend you put it on the sand as, as a regular process. Mm. I find the depth is uh, very similar to the Leopard 50 as well, so... Yeah, and of course a little bit surprising because of the dagger boards, you can't uh, go into water under five and a half foot with the dagger board version, but let's talk about the boat itself. What okay. do you think, honey? Well, it's a lot of boat and it, it feels a lot bigger than what it really is. Um, they use, use the space really well. I really like the layout of the back as soon as you walk in the transoms and it opens to a massive big cockpit and the tables are set out really innovatively and use of space is really great. Um, I really like it but it does feel a really big heavy boat doesn't it but it's not. <laughs> it's not no no it's about 15 tons and really the space on this boat when you when you're on it does feel like there's more space than we get even in the Leopard 50 yeah. um, but it's the way they've designed it that gives you that feeling open spaces big couches a lovely day bed in the cockpit which lots of windows lots of windows uh, the day bed in the cockpit I want to mention because very seldom do you get a slouching or lying area that's in the shade mm. and we really like that because um, a lot of the lying areas on other boats are out in the sun and of course we want to keep out of the sun and mm. here we are sitting in it <laughs> But anyway, that's for your benefit, guys, because we've done this already. This is the second go. First time you couldn't see us because we were in the shade and the background was We'll show, in the, show you in the outtakes. <laughs> Flying the hull. So the HH50 and the OC50 can fly hulls. Now, I mean, for me, I really don't want to fly a hull because to me that indicates you are close to that point that you might capsize and I don't want to ever be close to that point. So I don't <laughs> like flying hulls myself. Actually, for me, all I could think of was, okay, yeah, you're going really fast, which will be really great, but um, everything that you need to prepare when you're, when you're on passage or when you're sailing, you've got to put a lot of stuff away and secure it down, everything. I was just thinking of flying a hull and, and all this other stuff that you would normally count on being fairly level, just just not being level anymore. Almost anyway, like a monohull. That's right. Oh my God. <laughs> Heaven forbid. <laughs> See the other thing with the HH50, there is no front cockpit, there is no flybridge. Although on the HH55 there is a front cockpit and the HH55 also has a front steering position. Remember the price this year, it's an extra half a million dollars, I think, to step up from the HH50 to the HH55 on top of an already impressive baseline so a significant step up but this is a phenomenally well-built boat this really is quality build everything is superbly finished off you can change the color scheme and, and individualize it to a point which is really important and here we have the polies for the OC50 as you can see in light winds the boat will sail very close to wind speed boat will sail at about 10 knots in 12 knots of wind and up to 18 knots in a 20 knot wind, again on a beam reach, which is obviously the best point of sail. Sailing upwind, the boat will also do six to 11 knots at 45 degrees of true wind. These results can also be seen being real as, as shown by these photos from an HH50 actually underway. 
Okay, so first of all, you have to be well enough off to be able to afford it. And after that, I believe this boat is really suited for those people who have had experience with sailing, especially catamarans, and who want to go fast. There is no point buying a boat of this quality and nature unless you have a desire to use the sails, use the experience of the designers, and take advantage of the boat's speed and performance. Now, those are probably the qualities I think benefit purchasers looking to buy this boat. So, I mean, I really like the HH. So thanks to the HH crew who gave us the tour. Absolutely wonderful boat. Gets our thumbs up for a high performance, high quality performance catamaran. What I want to say too is it's really on the upper level of those performance cats. So on a scale, it's it's kind of getting like top shelfish. It is. This is a top shelf catamaran. Um, and next week we're going to be reviewing the Kinetic 54. Mm. So look forward to that, guys. And hope you enjoy the tour, guys. All the best. We'll see you next week. See you later. So, do you want to be top shellfish? <laughs> Stop being so shellfish. <laughs>